hope you are able to see my Monday screen now. So as I, uh, as we know, today's topic is how to build uh, creative processes for social media. So now uh, on my on on my screen, you are seeing this uh, board, which I actually I've just picked up from the template center. This is a readily available board, but I thought I can build some use case on top of this. I can show you some automations and uh, some ways to create how to build your creative workflows right so right now you're seeing is is uh, the board is divided into three groups incoming request then in progress and then complete and also this is a, a process right and the incoming request is coming via form so this is the form here i'm just gonna open it I'm just going to show it to you and I, I have already open formed in this window, but this is the form basically. And once you submit this request, your request will come in this board. And then we, we also have a couple of columns, the priority, also the creative type, right? Then also we, we need to know if it is a Facebook post or Instagram or things like that. And all the information, so these are just example, right? But your process can be different, uh, but we are giving more stress on the, the workflow and the automation which you're going to use for this uh, system or solution. So the column names and the th these are all, you know that Monday is very flexible and um, these are not hard and fast, but definitely you can use some of the um, automation and some of the concept or workflows from today's webinar and i hope that will be helpful for you okay so i'm gonna uh, show you this form i just opened this form oh, let me show yeah so i just opened this form in the so that's how you so yeah that's how you create a form right you have this link here so what i did is basically uh and all of you have must i'm assuming that you already know how to create this form uh, so but just for uh, the newbies, I'm just explaining this. So once you have the board in place, you, all you have to do is just add form here. I already have a form, but I, I can add one more too. So I'm just adding that just to show you guys. So once I add the form, automatically the form, all the fields uh, will appear here. Some of them are, of course, some. if I go into edit mode, if you don't want to show any field, you just have to go into edit form. And so now, for example, this priority is shown. Uh, the status is also shown, but definitely we don't want to show this status. So all you can do is just hide this question. So the form, so whatever columns you'll have on board, they will be automatically on this form view because this is just nothing but the view you are creating. And then you will have to go into edit form and you will have to decide what questions you want to show because uh, definitely whatever is there on your board, everything will appear here. And then you can decide you want to show or you want to hide it. So now, so this was just an example. So I'm just deleting this. But this way I built my form and which I already have here. So this is a request, uh, just a uh, standard data, the request title, the priority, the creative type, and so on. So let's say that I have a request time. I'm just going to take this um, same name, but I'm going to say product two maybe. So I have a request title, then uh, you can also get the priority because that will that will be important for creative team to know. Also the creative type, what you want, let's say it's a, it's video. Right. And then you, you can also get this data when you are uh, getting this request. Right. If it is um, if it, if you want it on the Facebook too, then you can just say. Applicable. Applicable and you think that Twitter is not so you can just mention not applicable. And also if you want due date, because they will also need creativity will need some time to work on that. So. Right, so then let's say that I'm hoping to come out. Yeah, almost a month. And then if you have any file for them, then you can attach that here too. And also the brief. 
right? So once I submit this, now I successfully submitted the request. Now here starts our workflow. Once the request is submitted, the data is going to come here. You see now request is come here. And then you will be basically start working on this request, right? So all the data is here. It's a high priority. The creative type is uh, video and then all the necessary information. So you know now, you know that only three social media platform um, needs this post. Uh, and also you have the due date and if there is any creative brief also, we will have that here. So now you see that the moment I submitted this now, this is just a post and these are the these are the necessary information, but definitely to work on this post, you will have to have some subtasks, right? You will uh, updating these posts and, you know, status stuck working on it, pending review. That's fine, but you are going to work on this post and then there will be some tasks, right? So I used uh, and normally all these uh, all these requests generally they have similar tasks right you have to so for example i'm going to open this now subtask so these are the subtasks and you see they automatically got created i just submitted i didn't even create this so i just submitted my request but these automatically popped up so these steps are nothing but the tasks which are which 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 i need to because in order to work on on this post i need to have these steps right steps or task whatever you want to say so the first step is brainstorm copy design or final approval and then you have the task status for that due date assets and docs and the time tracking column if you want to have so now how do i how did i create this automatically because if you know that the, there are some standardized tasks and every time a new request come you will need this to be created Right. So rather than just manually create it, I use the automation, very powerful automation uh, to create the subtask, sub right? Sub item in Monday, we say it's sub, sub item and which is here. So uh, and I can show you. Uh, so in sub item create uh, item is created. I just use the trigger item is created and then I just created this sub item. So I'll show you how to do that. So I just use the create um, the trigger is created. Right? Item is created is my trigger. You can have any trigger, by the way. So let's uh, I already showed you the item created, right? You can have for status change too, right? So let me show you. Because I already have that um, automation, I'm going to show you the new automation and then of course our trigger will change so when status changes to something then create so i'm going to search create so item and then again i need four sub items right so i'm just gonna use this again so what i'm doing is that i'm just adding actions so the same trigger right but i now how many sub item those many sub items those many um you'll have this creation right right now in my use case there are four tasks which are needed so i just repeated this four times but if you have n number you know that there are five or six standardized tasks i'm talking about standardized tasks uh, then you can use this multiple times so the trigger is the same when status changes to something. You can choose actually any trigger. When status changes to something, I used when item is created, uh, or you can choose when due date is nearby, you know, anything which you want to. Um, Monday is very flexible, you know, the custom automation. You can use any, any uh, trigger. So this is a trigger and any action, like right? n number of action. And with this additional action, it made our life so easy because you can just add multiple so if you add if you want multiple triggers in a sense this and status changes to something and something right so that also we can do right now i'll just delete this okay 
so okay so this is now you are building the automation you are just filling uh this is just to fill in the blanks when status changes to working on it then create a sub item now i have to be a little bit um creative here so i'm just gonna go into my board again and i'm gonna copy paste it so i know that brainstorm oh, sorry. so so when you create a sub item so you see by default it's new item here but you want if you if you don't if you do not do anything so you see now if you just click and leave it it's gonna take the name new item but we don't want new item so you see now this is uh the the fill in the blanks right we just click here if I just leave it, that means my new item will be created. But definitely, we don't want new item. We want brainstorm. Then we want copy. So you have to remove. By default, it will be new item. But you can very well edit it. And then design. And same thing and final approval. And all the fill, uh, blanks are filled. So now I just create the automation. I just took the different trigger because I wanted to sh uh, show uh, how to build this automation. So now, um, of course, you have to keep only one uh, because there's that there has to be only one trigger. So you saw this that when my item is created, because as soon as I created my item, you didn't even we didn't even realize actually it, it just happens like microsecond, you know. For example, I just created this test, and in if you if we want to see, you see how the sub items are getting created. Beautiful. I have like within a fraction of a second. Now let me let me just keep just one of the automation active. So let's see now how. So now if your workflow wants that, you don't want the for four sub item to be created when the incoming request because okay so yeah so that let's say that there is an incoming request now you see now there is this incoming request i'm just going to take it okay uh, assume that that automation was not there so my just request came in but now you want whenever my status changes to working on it let's assume that this is empty okay because now my automation says when status changes to working on it then i want because Let's say that I want somebody is going to approve this request, right? There is a request approval workflow. So, so that's why I was saying it. It totally depends on your workflow. I, I took workflow where whenever any request comes in, I want to see those four tasks, right? But now my workflow is whenever this request is, let's say, approved. Maybe I have some one more. So you see how seamlessly I'm building my use case, right? You just need to know your use case and in your head and and once you know the workflow in actual layman like english that okay i want to do this when this happens then it, it's so easy because this is a no core system right so you just have to use the automations it's uh, um, very user friendly so now i say that whenever my status changes to approve because that's my uh, requirement Right. Whenever my status changes to approved, I want these sub items. So, so in a fraction of a second, I just built a new workflow that whenever my request is approved, I need to create this four sub tasks because when my request is approved, then I want to work on this request. And then you can have further workflows too. That whenever it is request approved, then um, you know, you move this uh, item to in progress group and things like that. There are so many automations just to organize your work better, right? 
So now if you want to see it live, if now I change to approve and um, now in a minute, all the um, tasks will get created. Okay. So, so this is uh, automatic task creation with whichever trigger you want. Now, now next thing I wanted to show you is now basically you are tracking your task here, right? So these are your steps, brainstorm, brainstorm working or done, copy, design, find, find the approval. Now, because these are sub items, uh, you can actually drag this progress of, of your sub items at the pair, uh, at the item level so this was your item right now on in this now if you look at this item you're not able to see uh, okay what is happening in my sub item level right so we want to see that too we want to see that too so i have these brainstorm copy design find approval and task status is uh, blank here but as and when i'm working on this statuses i want to see something at the sub item level too right so then let me just refresh this i want to build some new automation because you see the sub items are always so so you have to actually click here and then expand the sub item so whenever i refresh it you you won't be able to see what's happening at the sub item level Right. And what if you want to show that at the because it's better to see at the parent level, right? What is happening with my task? So we do have uh, one feature for this where you can see your what's happening at your sub item level. You can see that on the task level too. So and that is nothing but the uh, I'm just going to add I'm just going to go here so you can actually show this on a parent level. So show summary on parent item. So if I click here, so you see, I went to the task status and I want to, as I, as, as I was explaining you, it's better to see at the parent level because as, as, as soon as I refresh this, this is going to be collapsed, right? And then you're not able to see this. So then this um, parent sub parental summary becomes very, um, important because now you see if i refresh this right if i refresh this i am going to uh, see this here i'm going to show all the you see now okay and assume that this is working on it so you see now beautifully it shows the progress of the sub item level two and it also showed shows me 75 percent or whatever percent is there so this is and you can name this as a task status too because it's nothing but or task progress because you already have a status there right so uh, this is very important also similarly you can also show this is so all the sub items actually you can show the summary on the parent item so now let's say you have some due dates here right let's say 31st and if i show this on the parental summary then you see how my timeline this is this is the nicest feature which it has because according to the because you have a due date here but you need to know what's happening here too right because these are the these are your tasks for date and now because everything you took it at the sub item level so then this becomes your due dates right so, and all the columns which are there, you can actually take it at the higher level, um, the task status, the date, also the owner, right? Uh, so this was, this I wanted to show you when you use these sub items for, and this is not only for this use case, for any use case you are using the sub item. And if this makes sense to your use case, then definitely you should use these features. Uh, now, another thing I wanted to show you is the status column. Now, the, this status column now, this is a task, uh, this is a post status, right? Nothing but the task. Let's say this as a task, okay, creating post product two, and these, these as a subtask. I'm going to uh, use that terminology now. So, so this becomes your task status. So this task status, nothing but this status, right? So you want to know um, 
of course this is a progress status you are seeing it here but you would on because uh, let's say that when this gets completed you will have to change this status to done right so you don't want that manually you want that automatically so there is one more automation for this and I'm, i didn't build that purposely because i wanted to show you how to build it from scratch and that is uh, not a custom automation it's a built automation which is used for um which is used for only for sub items so i'm going to go it's not in the custom it's in the sub item so when you go to the automation you go into sub items and there are a few a few automations which are also which also support sub items so if you see this that means that automation supports sub item 2 so i'm going to use this one so see when all the sub item changes to something then change item status to something so so what is this uh, automation meaning it automatically so basically it checks the condition that when all sub items of an item have status which is uh, now it will automatically show you only task status because task status it's sub item status it didn't show me the other status or it didn't show me another status column because we are talking about sub item so when all sub items of an item have sub sub item task status to done change my item status to completed because now in so just to understand this because uh, in when my all the items sub items sub tasks are done that means my uh, task is done right so when I, i'm just going to build this so now if you see let's change this to done okay nothing happened here now assume that this is also done design is done this is done and just take a pause and also this is done now because of my automation i don't have to of course this is a progress but you you can't see here right unless you hover here you can see that 100% but i added that automation that when all my uh, sub items are done and even if there is one more let's say that you created four but um you've created four standard sub tasks but you wanted one more you can also add that right and it will automatically take that in also into consideration so it's not only for four or five it just says that when all my sub items are done this task will be completed status will be completed because that's what i filled the blanks with right now uh, so this was for completion now there is one more automation which i wanted to show you for sub items and this is a uh, again a custom automation which we can use it for and it supports sub items so i thought of showing so there is one automation which is um status change automation but it changes the another status so when status changes to something so i'm also going to be using this i'll tell you for what so when status changes to okay i want to use it for sub item when sub item task changes to working on it change the status to working on it because that's what it is right and you can choose to build any of the automation there is no um, like uh, order here you can choose a, this also you can build it first i just built this first and thought of showing you this one too because this just stuck my mind um so this one is when status sub items changes to working on it change status to work so how we did all the item when all the sub items are changes to done that means my item is completed and this one is whenever my sub uh, any sub task let's say here i'm just going to go here because this is empty anyways and yeah let's make this blank so first task i'm changing uh, task status so my sub task status i'm changing let's i started working on it and i change this to working on it then automatically my in a minute this one will also change to working on it 
let's give few seconds so i thought of using so two two automations are different for this one i use all the sub items and for this one i just use and you must have used this automation for several other use cases also it just takes into consideration when my one status changes another status should also change so i just used it for sub item Think there is some, some item task. Maybe there is a delay here. Let's refresh this. there is a little lag here let's try for the new one using my previous one so now i have this so let's change it to so this will be helpful whenever you are working on the task. You don't have to change the task status at the two levels, right? Just you're just changing it here and everything is updated at the task level too. Of course, and it will show you here too, but it will be but because as soon as you'll refresh this, it will be uh, collapsed, right? So then it's better to see at the parent level everything. So um, yeah, so this concludes our today's training.